Thanks, everybody. Welcome to Build. I'm your host, Ricky Camilleri, and our next guest is a legend. He's here to talk to us about the latest entry in his legendary documentary series, The Up Series. In 1964, director Michael Abted and a director by the name of Paul Allman interviewed a group of 14 seven-year-olds for the film Seven Up. Now, 56 years later, after uh, Michael has revisited the subjects every seven years, we are on 63 Up. And this series continues to marvel in its ability to condense time and reveal to us the beauty and pain that comes along with living. Let's take a look at 63 Up. In 1964, Granada Television brought together a group of seven-year-olds. We have followed their lives every seven years, their dreams, ambitions, and fears for the future. Seven years older, seven years fatter, a bit less hair. You look at me at seven, and you look at me even now at 63. It's flown by, Michael. It's a lifelong achievement to be part of this program. Once you get to your 60s, it all gets a bit, oh, how long have we got now? <laughs> I certainly don't look forward to it every seven years. I suppose as you get a bit older, you've got less to lose. All these things that I've said over the years, yes, it has been worth it. And you better cut it, because otherwise I'm going to cry. of pure joy in my life was when my son was handed to me when he was born. There's just no place for regrets in this world. Maybe one regret is probably would have liked more children. There's various things that I can do they can't do. They can't change the light bulb. <laughs> but I can't get on Netflix. When we started at seven, most women were in the kitchen. Did you meet enough men before you decided who to marry? I thought that was actually an insulting question. You didn't have any idea of the changing role of women. I know you want you to go... Aah! Children inherit something from their parents. Nobody wants to confess that they suffer mental ill health. I'm sitting here talking to you now. I'm squirming. I want my life to have meant something. The sooner you understand who you are, the sooner you understand what you can do. <laughs> it's taken me virtually 60 years to understand who I am. I'm still the same little kid, really. Probably all of us are. Cheers! There's still plenty to do. It's not all over yet. Everybody, please welcome Michael Abtad. Let's hear it. Sir. Uh, thank you so much for being here. Pleasure. Pleasure. Congratulations on another entry uh, in the series. Yeah. What? Um, I want to go back to the beginning. You were a researcher on the first film, right? Working yeah. pretty much in tandem with the, with the director at the time? Yeah, I mean, I just joined the company with, along with five other young men at Granada in Manchester. And I'd been in the company about six months, do doing very little, you know, because they weren't the big company, but they were trying to train another generation of people. How old were you at the time? 21, I think. And um, we started to have to sort of work on proper programs. They couldn't, they couldn't afford to keep paying us for doing nothing. And so one of the first assignments I had was uh, to join a Canadian director who was doing this. Um, for the first time, uh, about, about this idea about the Eng English class system and how can we best dramatize it and all that. So we got on well. I was very political, and he was a good director, but entirely ignorant of the British system. Um, and so, you know, we began to kind of work together on it. And, you know, uh, what, I, what I had to bring to it was you know, was the powerful, as it were, uh, idiotic w way that the British were running their education and, and whatever. So uh, we got on very well, you know, the, the Canadian and I, and uh, then um, we did it. And it was a huge hit, huge hit. Yeah. Because it, it did go deep into people's souls, you know, it, it was nailing the country for ignoring their young people and all that sort of sort of stuff and you know it got a tremendous reception and then that was that and then I went back to doing the odd jobs doing a bit of Coronation Street and things like that and then about five years later I got a summons from the management saying uh, we want to do another one we want to go and try another one would you like would you do it because Paul had gone back to Canada a long time before so I said yes thought about it for about six seconds, and uh, I did the second one. 
And th that went well, too. And I remember after I'd done the first sort of week of filming, I, I rang the management up and said, look, you know, I don't want to stay in Manchester for the rest of my life, although it was a really good company in those days. But um, if you say to me, we're going to go on with this, I guarantee that I'll come and do it. Hmm. I want to go to America and work in America and all that stuff, but I think this is so important that I'll do it. And so they said, okay. And so I did. I went back, you know, I, I don't know, 17, 18 times. No, what am I talking about? But I've, I've been going back every seven years. Did you, uh, do you sever ties with them in between films? No. Uh, yeah, I didn't think so. But no. like you're, you're, you're very close to these documents, to, the, yeah. to these subjects. Yeah, but you can't get too close to them that, uh, you know, you know too much about them. I mean, uh, there's a, a, a lady who works with me, um, Claire, and, uh, you know, she lives in, Eng in England and she keeps a kind of eye on things, but not in an uh, aggressive way. And then I come in every seventh year and just, we roll on them. And then we start, you know, finding out about our, our each other. So it seemed to be important that we didn't know too much. I mean, big things we know. And also, since it's every seven years, you don't want to hear really about what's going on in those early seven seven years. You know, I mean, if it's spectacular, you know, we won't have any film of it because we we only go in once a year, once every seven years. How long do you normally spend filming with each subject? It depends. I mean, if I have to go to Australia, which I do with two of them, you know, I'll spend I'll film for about five or six days. Some in England I'll film for half a day. It depends how articulate they are or how interesting the story is. Or right, like, not much has happened. Yeah. I'm still married. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still alive, you mean? Um, yeah. So, no, and, it's, so, uh, and I, was, I have been very disciplined about not going into them. I mean, uh, now and again, I, we uh, arrange a little treat. I mean, if I have a film opening in London, then we'll do a special screening for them to come in. But generally, I, I don't have much to do with them during the seven years, which I think is important, because it's what, what's happening in the seventh year. Now, we can go back with them and, and describe it, but I don't want to go... I wouldn't want to do it, have to do it when I... You know, oh, this is them in two after two years, this is them after three years, and all that. So it's always sort of around the seventh, seventh, uh, you know, the seventh year, and, and then by that time, you know, you know what's going to be the serious events of that seven years, because they've lived the seven years. But if, if I stop going in every time that something exciting happens, I get in a terrible muddle. You know, uh, I imagine when you went back and they were 14, you're kind of catching up on the last seven years, but you're really just checking in with them at that moment because they are 14 years old. Yeah. But when you start going back at 28, 35, 42, and they have real-life events to, to, to recount mm -hmm. to you, did you start figuring out what the aesthetic or what the model was at that point for how the film could be shaped? Or does it? do you find that that changes yeah. every time you go in? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, I, I don't know... Where's what's going to go where in the film until I've I've shot the film? I mean, because I don't I truly don't know what's coming out, so I could be shocked or, or things I, I I don't know about that I should have maybe known about. So it, it, it's starting from scratch in a way. I mean, I know what I've done in the past is going to be useful this time. So, I mean, if, you know, if they're ma married or whatever, had children and stuff, I know I want to bring that up and maybe get some pictures of it and whatever. But, um, you know, I, I, I like the fact that I can discover things when we do it rather than have them being prepared and trying to figure out what's the best way to say it. You know, you strip the film, uh, 63 and up, I think in particular, of any sort of sentimental hand on the part of the director. And that's so interesting to me because the film itself is so moving and emotional yeah. simply just off the fact that we are 
watching people talk about their lives yeah. and recount moments in their in, in in their lives. When did you realize that you didn't have to play a heavy hand as the sort of emotional maestro when it came to to, to the film? No, I think I think I, 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 you could see that almost straight off. Yeah. As long as the, if they if they got the feeling that I was going to bully them or do what I wanted to do with them, then you know then it might have been a bit more tense. But um, you know, since it isn't, because they're telling me for the first time these you know large events in their life over the last period of time, you know, I I, I think it puts us on equal ground. You know, that I'm not holding something back and working up to some you know dramatic thing and whatever. That the drama is going to happen when we're talking to each other. Yeah. And one of the subjects uh, in this, maybe two of them, if, I, if, I, if I'm mistaken, uh, sort of turn it back around on you. They, they, they remember uh, a time where they did not like the way that you were interviewing them, and they sort of poke at your uh, so, sort of social faux pas at a, at a certain time. What was that like? <laughs> well, it was amusing. I mean, <laughs> it was it to be kind of criticized and uh, by them because they've got a bit of power there. And, Whatever, but but no, I mean it's give and take. I mean I can't I can't have it all my own way, and then don't expose myself to things I haven't said or whatever that they know about that you know I, I haven't thought of talking about. I mean as long as it isn't my private life and and whatever. But uh, it's just to get it as, as as genuine as we possibly can and as fresh as we can. And the, at no point were you ever worried about turning it back on you or not not having them oh. be the, or did you feel like well at this point the documentary has been a huge part of their lives and we should talk about yeah. my role in their lives yeah no i mean if they want to do it i mean i don't know i don't put myself in it i'm not in it at all i mean my little voice is there but uh, little you, voice. my little voice <laughs> but you don't see you know you don't see me there so i don't want to really attract visual attention to me and so i don't do shots walking around the you know the the the, the, uh, the local grocery with them or something like that so i always keep my presence away from it so you know uh, it's about them never but i I mean, I'll I said there's a reckoning for you in the sense when she says the way that you talk to the women when we were 20, yeah, uh, 20 yeah. 21, 28 years old yeah. and mostly just asked about our relationships with men and yeah. whether or not we were married or planning on getting married was very different from the way that you talk to the men about their careers. Obviously, yeah. that had to do with the, the time period that that, that, that was taking yeah. place. But what was that like for you to reflect on that yourself? Well, it was kind of... I thought a bit impertinent, but I wanted to do it. I mean, I wasn't going to ask them about their sex lives or something like that unless they wanted to tell me about them. So I, I didn't want to invade them in a way that they might be embarrassed by or something like that. But, you know, I mean, you know, I, I want them to tell me exactly, you know, what they are and what they want and what they do. And in the case with Jackie, you know, the one you talk about, you know, how much, you know, she remembered on me and how, you know, cross she got with me all the time. And, and, and you know, it really was cross. I mean, we had to stop. She got so gr grumpy with me. But she loves it. I mean, she absolutely loves it. And, uh, I mean, I don't mean... She, she likes jousting with you a little yeah, bit. Yeah, and, and she is very passionate about what she is, you know, because, you know, I, God knows. I mean, to, to have grown up, you know, I don't know, about... 20, 30 years before them, you know, there's been a big, when, when I was growing up, you know, none of this was going on. So I, I never shared in the growing up as a sort of the kind of adult way that they were brought into, into the world and, you know, their position. I mean, they were much more self-aware than I was when they were their, their age. And so sometimes we kind of compare that with them. You know, I never knew that and I wasn't told that and whatever, you, you would never behave like that, and, you know, there they are, cursing away and whatever. Um, but, uh, I mean, you know, I have a lot of material, a huge amount of material, yeah. so, and, and uh, you know, I, I, I tell them that um, up to a point, you know, that I'll listen to them if something comes out that they really don't want to ha want broadcast, then if I can see their point, I agree with it immediately. 
you know, I really don't want, I, mainly, I don't want to lose them. You know, one of the, uh, there's a, a line um, in the Mike Lee film, Another Year, where one of the characters says about another character that, uh, she just says, life isn't always kind. Yes. And um, there's an aspect of 63 and up, not just because they're both British, but, <laughs> but there's an aspect of 63 up, and the up series in general, that you are unsparing in the idea that life isn't always kind. Yeah. And it, continu- it keeps going, yeah. but it isn't always kind to some people. And some of your yeah. subjects have had a, a fairly like, r- rough time of it. Yeah, some of them have. And, you know, I'm not a fool. I'll, I'll know someone if, I, if I'm really cruel with them, you know, I'll never see them again. Yeah. So I do want, I think the most important thing is to keep people in it and not f- fall out of it because they're so angry with me. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I, I will, I'll warn them what I'm going to talk about, but I don't actually do it. I mean, I, it does come out of my mouth, but I don't tell them what I'm going to say. But also, I mean, you know, sometimes they just want something taken out of the film. And if, uh, if it's passionate and I can understand them, I'll do it, because I don't want to lose them. I mean, they have, and I think they realize it, they have the, the upper hand, because if they say, if you don't take that out, I'm never coming back, right. then, then I'm the loser. One of the, one of the big subjects for each, uh, or for each subject that you're interviewing is uh, Brexit and, and Trump huh. as, as, yeah. as well. Um, obviously, over the course of the last you know, 63 years or, you know, 50, 50 something years that you've been doing this, there's been different politicians in power, different crises that I'm sure that you, that you've engaged with them on. But how much does it feel like this point in time is different for, for for them? It was a fiasco. I mean, still is right. Yeah. And will be forever. But I was really caught out in it because when, when I was discussing with the studio, how much money I can have to do it, I said, well, look, I must have, the, the resources to do a piece about Brexit when it happens. You know, and I, it may be six months after I finish shooting or blah, 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 all that rubbish. But uh, no, I mean, I was very un- worried about it because I couldn't put the program out without with nothing about Brexit. And I got a, like three little bits from the more political boys there as a kind of reserve but since nothing happened, I mean, there are a couple of mentions of it, but it didn't, I mean, I thought it could be a huge event, event as it probably will be if it ever happens, and particularly with this little group of people, would be a kind of, you know... Well, you think, I mean, you hear so much, both in America and, I think, in the, in the UK, that everybody, that everybody is very divided, and that politics is very divisive right now, but considering your, all of your subjects pretty much fall on the same line about how they feel about about Brexit, whether they voted for it or not. At this point, they're all pretty disgusted with what's, what's, yeah, what's but happening. It's a general disgust. Dis- what, what's a good word for it? I mean, they, they're pissed off with the government. Right. You know, in uh, general. In, in general, which right. the British usually are, anyway. <laughs> as, are uh, as are Americans, I yeah, think. Yeah, well, both have got p- reason for it. Is is done? Is uh, Mr. Trump coming in here on Monday? Coming in here? Yes. No, uh, he was unfortunately uh, not invited. Oh, okay. Or maybe enough. fortunately not invited. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, but but anyway, I mean, it's it's, you know, I had to do it if it had happened. But since it didn't happen, I mean, it it looked as though it's going to happen before I started shooting. And we had all sorts of contingents. We thought, how clever we are. Here's some money put aside, or here's a few extra days put aside if, if something happens between us finishing shooting and going out on the air. And really up to about you know, 10 days before, it, um, before we broadcast, there was still no res- resolution of it. You know, so for the last 10 days or so, then... I just had to hope the, the good Lord was on my side and wouldn't throw it at us in the last minute. You know, some of them, some of your subjects, I think most of them actually say that they feel like they are the last generation to have gotten it, uh, not, not, got, not gotten it good in the UK, but at least had a safety net, had the NHS. Yes, um, it's true, yeah. Uh, and I think a lot of Americans would feel that, feel that, would say that here, but... 
you know, over the course of this series, it hasn't always been good for them, and the, the net no. itself hasn't always been perfect. Do you think that that is a form of nostalgia to look back and say that no, we had it good? I don't think you have to be very nostalgic, you know, to see how bad the, f the, the hospital service is or blah, blah, blah. I mean, it was, you know, until we finished our run of endless con conservative... Uh, you know, governments and, and, and the Labour Party became sort of, sort of much stronger you know, pretty much over the first two films we did. You know, they, they did get a rotten, you know, a, a rotten time. They weren't looked after at all. Education was all over the place. And, you know, usually, a surprise, surprise, the people with money got the best look at it. So, you know, it was, it was happening quickly. You know, the, after the first, after the Second World War, you know, when I was born, I mean, it was it was beginning slowly to dawn on people that the country was hopelessly divided, and the hope and the company country had really worked together and gave their lives together to you know to to, to stop us being routed by the Nazis. So it was a very heroic Second World War for the Brits. You know, we, we, we dragged the, jet, the Americans in, but, you know, it was really the courage of, of, uh, of, uh, of the United Kingdom that saved us, as it were, saved the world from, you know, Nazism, whatever. Do you think, uh, you know, when you first started this 7-Up, uh, it was about the British class system, and I've always found that British artists, be they documentarians, specifically play storytellers, documentarians, playwrights, filmmakers, are far more invested and uh, interested in the class system of their country than Americans are. Americans don't really talk about class. No. That maybe last five, ten years it's really started, but prior to that it was, almost impo it, it was almost impossible to really make anything about it. Has that changed in the UK? Do you find that the class system or discussions about the class system have changed? Yes. I mean, much to the better. Right. You know, that, that period after the Second World War when the country put itself together and, you know, won a, a great battle and whatever and worked with the Americans and whatever... Um, no, I, 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 I think that, you know, that they did, and things began to change, but much too slowly. Mm. Um, and what, one of the things that, that I offered it with this film is a very kind of vivid and understandable way of how the country was up the creek, that they weren't, they weren't looking after their people. Now, their people don't have to be great scientists and things like that, but to get people to do good work and to keep up with the Americans and the Germans and all that sort of stuff. So I think this sort of film, that's why it was so popular, it was done on a populist you know, basis. It wasn't yeah. a load of people talking economics and stuff like that. Here was here were statistics about people in the lower classes who were didn't ever have any chance of going to university or whatever. And you could see us rotting away, you know, uh, behind the Americans. God bless you. No, that's nice. I'm being... No, I, 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 <laughs> um, over the, you know, you're at 63 up. I'm imagining, you know, uh, God willing, you're going to make 70 up. And maybe that's, but maybe that's the, the end of the series? Or is 63 up the end I, of the series? What do you I think? I think it'll, we'll know when to stop it. You know, I mean, I mean, I may not be here, but in in seven years, and I'm fairly healthy. Uh, you you should be surprised. <laughs> I shouldn't make assumptions. Yeah, you should not make assumptions. But you know, I, I would hope this program would go on without me. I mean, I don't know who would do it. People have worked on it with me and whatever. So I, I'd like it not to stop until it has to stop because it becomes irrelevant. You know, and, and society in England, it, you know, is big, is more equal about it. I mean, there's still ridiculous objections. I mean, in, in, in the way people are, are treated, you know, education is still not as good as it should be, but it's a whole lot better than it was, you know, when I was at school and generations after me. So it is certainly improving. And also, you know, it's the idea of working with the Americans or working with the Europeans, you know, seems to be sensible. You know, 
in, in, you know, t t taking on the, the, the nasty people in the world, if the decent people in the world, you know, would sort it out, it could be done. Well, nasty people are in charge right now, unfortunately. Well, they always sort of are, but not, maybe true. not deep down. You know, maybe, you know, the, 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 the seeds of the seeds of equality uh, kind of leave, leave a mark and people begin to see what's the point of people, some people having everything and other people having nothing. This doesn't do anybody any good at all. So I think we, are in, a, in a way, we've become more, um, you know, labor, uh, more working class in our attitude towards it. Yeah, I mean, it took a, a fair amount of conservative leadership stripping away the safety nets for us to kind of come to this slightly more labor-friendly place. Yeah. Hopefully that, can, that yeah. continues. Um, you know, we're talking about class, and the first, uh, the first part of the series, 7-Up, and even some of the early ones were very much about class, and I, I think you can say and would say it still is, but for me, watching 63-Up, it really feels about whether you're rich or poor, time keeps going. Yeah. Life keeps going. Things yeah. happen in your life. And what it really feels like to look back yeah. uh, at, at that life, be it, be, it, be it good or bad. Is there one thing, is there something that you want people to take away from the film after they watch it? Well, I've, 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 my, my parents gave up their any, you know, Fun in life, really, by p putting the three ch we three children through a good good education, which you know, you know, was not really forthcoming by scholarship. You know, was that they had to pay for it, and that was their gift to us. They were, you know, they were educated people, but you know, I think the the the, the weight they put on education and what it would could do for you, you know, was the thing that most. The, the, the lower middle class were, you know, my father had a good education. I went to his old school in the middle of London. Um, but, you know, I, I, I think that they made a choice that education was the important thing, not necessarily going on nice holidays or what, whatever, but that was always in the back of our life as, as a family that, you know, and they put, all the money they had into our education. So, I mean, they were a, sort of a bit ahead in the game. I mean, they really had a very dull life because all the money went on our education. So that was, you know, and that was a living thing in front of me with I could see what they were giving up. So m my brother and my sister could, and I could have an education. So that was always the top not not going abroad, not going for swanking holidays, or not b buying cars and things like that. I mean, they never had a car. Um, you know, the kind of sacrifice they made was well into into my into into my blood. I mean, not uh, not everybody had that, so I knew exactly what I would want my children to have, and and. What if this if this movie made any effect that, that would show people the sense of, of having a, 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 an education so you can have opportunities and things like that but you can't have one without the other unless you're a footballer or win the or win the pool, the pools where you can become trillionaires overnight you know um, you've got to have an education if you're going to do well. Is there a part of you that looks at your subjects in this as? Kind of your children? Well, yes, uh, qu quite a bit. I mean, I, I, I have very strong emotions about them, and I think they re return that favor, if you, if, if you, if you like. But I mean, I, I don't think we ever talk about it. But we, because it was a good idea not to see them between programs. Then we do not, we, they don't over, to, over you know overuse their time with me, and I don't over, overuse my time with them. So it's always a kind of event. It's like having a seven-year holiday. Um, but I think that was a good decision, because otherwise it becomes out of control. Because you know, thirty things would happen to each of them over seven years, and how are you going to tell that story? 
I think the same could be said with, for my relationship with my parents. Don't overuse your time with me. Yeah. Things will get out of control. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have time for a couple questions from the audience. Who has a question? Hi. This is a question from our uh, what, uh, web series. Um, what, what, do you, what was the most notable change in filming 7 up till 63 up? I didn't hear that. What was the most notable change um, between filming 7 up to 63 up? Obviously, age, they grew up. But what was the most notable change for you, maybe societally? Well, they told me what they want to do, um, what, we, what we should be shooting and all that. I mean, they, they took, to a certain extent, ownership of it, you know, whereas before I was kind of pushing them around and whatever. I mean, I, I, I didn't want to let them control the film. Right because I thought I knew more about it than they did, but now they knew more t about their lives than ever than, than I do, and, and they're very good at you know, saying, I want to do something about this and something about that, and you know, it's a shared, a shared matter, what goes in and you know, what we're going to talk about and what we're not. Uh, you know, so they're much more involved in the, in the subject matter than they've been as they get older which is what you want, because I want them to tell them, tell me and my audience about their lives, you know. Not my vision of their lives, but their, their vision of their lives. Uh, one more. Hi, um, I was just wondering, out of all the Up series, which one is your favorite and why? Well, I, I think the last one is always the, f the favorite. I mean, I, th I think we m made a big step forward in 28 up when we really did start talking real stuff. You know, they're not kind of giving inf information, but I think we started to get into things as a group at that age. And, and uh, you know, they were sort of settled in some ways in their life, so it wasn't what school are you going to go to, have you done this, have you done that. So I think I, I could see it turn at, at 28 and, and, and just become theirs because, I mean, I know in my mind what I want them to talk about, but I won't push it down them. I mean, if, if they have things to talk about and, you know, the, the reasonable time I'm ever going to have with them, that's what goes on, what they want to talk about, not what I want to talk about. So there was it around 28, it, think, it started moving over to them. They were running it, not in, not in a kind of uh, patriotic way or anything like that, but they realized that I wanted to know, they, uh, they knew more about their lives than I did about their lives, and so they should step up and tell me. And I think that started in 28. Uh, Michael, congratulations on the, the next entry in the series. It's yeah. amazing that you've done this for this long and followed through. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, but it's a beautiful series, and uh, I love this last entry. Uh, I, I, I wept on multiple occasions just at the idea of lives being led. Really? Uh, from, well, from watching the film? Yeah. It's oh, like I'm, even, I'm honored. Even if things weren't even sad, it's just hearing people reflect on, on moments of their lives yeah. is a... Whether it's happy or sad is, yeah. is, is an emotional experience. Well, that's what it does. Uh, so, um, well, anyway, good. <laughs> made, made you feel good. <laughs> well, anyway, uh, how can people see the film? It's, it's, it's coming out, right? Well, in, it's come out already yes. in, in, in Great Britain in television. It has to because it was you know, financed by te 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 television companies. But this is re it's different now in America because now it's going to go into cinemas before it goes on to television. So, you know, it'll get more attention, more press attention, I think, because it's going to be shown in cinemas, and that will create a bigger audience for television. So, you know, we're, we're in a much better situation, I think, than we've ever been. Uh, it's called 63 Up. It's going to be in theaters. And uh, Michael Apted, everybody, let's hear it. Oh, thank you. <laughs>